Good evening, folks. You know, it's 10 o'clock, right? I was going to take the night off. But I have to tell you, fresh off the Democratic National Convention, which I watched in its entirety this year, watching, I, I can't, it has to be a record number of Republicans who attended the Democratic Convention and spoke out about how they were going to support Kamala Harris and encouraging their constituents to do the same, to save American democracy. I open up my mailbox the next morning and there we have it. All right, I got notes here because we need them. The J6 Awards Gala at Bedminster Golf Club in New Jersey. So Donald Trump, two months before the election on September 5th, is choosing to host the fundraiser for the J6 insurrectionists. He will be the primary speaker. The promotion reads, and I'm quoting this verbatim, we gather to pay tribute not only to these individuals, but to all J6 defendants who have shown incredible courage and sacrifice, end quote. Yeah, well, <laughs> Let's talk about sacrifice. Let's talk about sacrifice and courage, okay? I get a couple of historical examples, okay? I have a lot more, but I don't have that much time. So let's talk about June 6, 1944, when 160,000 Allied troops landed on the beaches of Normandy to fight Nazi Germany. That was courage. That was sacrifice. Let's talk about a guy named Benjamin Keith Clark. I'm sure most people have never heard of him. He wasn't a firefighter. He wasn't a policeman. He wasn't a first responder on September 11th, 2001. He was a chef on the 96th floor of the South Tower who was credited with saving literally hundreds of people, getting them out of the building, including people in wheelchairs. He lost his life on that day, helping others. That's sacrifice. The people that Donald Trump is celebrating here are traitors. They are traitors and insurrectionists summoned to Washington by the world's biggest traitor, all because he would not accept the fact that he lost an election. He was a man who found people willing to break into the Capitol, beat the shit out of policemen, and go in there looking to harm people like Nancy Pelosi and Mike Pence. They built gallows outside to hang Mike Pence because he would not refuse to certify the election. And so here's what we've got. Aside from Donald Trump, we've got Rudy Giuliani, another total loser. If Donald Trump is the stupidest man in America, and I, I'm saying that he is, Rudy Giuliani is the second stupidest man in America. A man who gave up his entire life in the service of a villain to the point where now he lives like a freaking zombie and is about to face disbarment. He gave up all of it for Donald Trump who has thrown him under the bus several times, but he'll be there at Bedminster helping Donald Trump out with this event. The other guy that will be helping Donald Trump out is a guy named Anthony Raimondi. And in case you don't know him, he's a scumbag from one of New York City's biggest crime families who has ties to the mafia. Does Donald Trump actually associate with anyone who's not a criminal or a scumbag? I don't think so. Just take a look at his entire freaking entourage. Take a look at all of them. This is my point. I don't understand how this isn't automatically an immediate disqualifier for anyone who may be undecided in this election. I guess I have a problem with all of this because I have looked at this guy now for nine years to the point where I can't even watch him anymore. I, I look at him in clips because I cannot watch him live anymore. He infuriates me so much. And I have a very hard time comprehending how anybody could have any question about who they're voting for in November. If Donald Trump were a Democrat, I would be voting Republican in November. 
There is absolutely no question about that. I have thought this over in my head over and over and over again. There is no way I could support him if he were a Democrat. And he was a Democrat years ago. Now he's just Donald Trump. And he cares about nobody but himself. He does not care about this country. He does not love this country. And his followers do not love this country, no matter what they tell you. They might say they love this country, but their actions belie all of it. Donald Trump is batshit crazy. But you know what? He's dangerously batshit crazy because he believes his own shit. And his minions are cultists. They are incapable of independent thought. They're walking around with T-shirts that read, I'm voting for the 34-time convicted felon. Okay? He wants to tell you he's fighting for freedom. The man tried to steal your votes. The man tried to overturn the will of the people. So for me, undecided at this point, they seem like an oxymoron to me. So in closing, let me just say this. The fee for this lovely gala will be $2,500 a person or 50 grand for a table of 12. Now, what do they get for that? They get a chance to win a commemorative plaque celebrating the song Justice for All, which is basically Donald Trump reading the Pledge of Allegiance while the traitors and insurrectionists sing the national anthem in the background. That's how they open their hate rallies now. They don't use the national anthem anymore. They use their national anthem, just like they believe in Republican Jesus, but not really anybody else's vision of Jesus. Jesus. Donald Trump is the ultimate con man. And I question whether any of these people, regardless of whether they deserve the money they raise, I question whether any of these people will, will, will see a penny of this. Because he is the ultimate con man and the ultimate shitbag. And I find it very difficult to believe that the top of the Republican Party ticket is this guy. It's mind boggling to me. They have allowed him to take over the party. And he now owns them. So let me just say this. It is clear that the legal system is not going to keep Donald Trump from running. We should have known that from the very beginning because he stacked the Supreme Court not only to overturn Roe, but so this would happen. He would remain on the ticket no matter what he did. And that's what he's doing. But you know what? The American people have the final say here. So I'm suggesting to you, if you are on the fence right now, you'd best get off it. Because regardless of whether your issue is the economy or immigration or abortion, your ability to deal with any of that shit goes away as soon as American democracy falls. People in other countries know it. People in other countries are hoping the American people can rise to the occasion and get rid of this guy. You know what? Donald Trump is going to stick it right in your face on September 5th. And I suggest to you that we have to stick it to Donald Trump on November 5th. I'll talk to you all later.